Hello, welcome to today's edition of the Telescope Makers Workshop. My name is Francis O'Reilly, and I'll be your host today as we discuss making opposite but equal surfaces. In this case, I'm making a tertiary mirror for a 12 and a half inch F12 Stevic Paul telescope. I've already made the primary mirror and the secondary mirror. Let me explain the system to you. A Stevic Paul is an unobstructed off-axis telescope. The primary mirror in this case is a 12 and a half inch F12. It deflects the light converging off-axis to a 6 inch F10 convex secondary. The secondary then diverges the light back to a 8 inch F7 and a half third, uh, tertiary, which then forwards the light to a flat, which sends the light out of the telescope to be used for observing or taking uh, measurements. The Secondary and tertiary mirrors have to be of opposite curves, and they have to match for the system to work. I'm building this mirror, this telescope, to prove the design. Several have been built, none this large. I'd like to see how it works. There's obvious issues here. One of the large concerns is the um, number of optical surfaces. If I were to send these mirrors out for coating, for example, at Clossing, Clossing has wonderful coatings providing 91% reflectivity. That means a 9% loss of light each time a surface is involved. 91% and then 91% of 91%, 91% of that, 91% of that uh, is how it works. It comes out to, as I recall, about 72% of the light. The design, however, is, however, is fascinating to me, and I can get high reflectivity coatings. They're just brutally expensive. I may decide to do that, or I may decide to get the high re reflectivity coatings for the uh, secondary and tertiary and leave a, uh, a barrel coating on the uh, primary. I haven't decided yet. We'll work that out down the pipe. In any event, one of the uh, old ways of making a uh, opposite surfaces that really doesn't work very well, it's not acceptable, would be to grind the mirrors against each other. The problem is that you run into a different a difference of radius equal to the grain size, or difference of sagita equal to the grain size of the final grain that you're working with. And that's just too much for polishing to work out. It just doesn't work. So the better way to do it, the best practice would be to use two separate tools for two separate mirrors and then grind them to the proper sagittas through the use of a uh, spirometer, measure it with the spirometer, and then from there uh, bring the surfaces to bear through interferometry. So I have made a test plate for the primary mirror, for the secondary mirror rather, a six inch text plate. And this is concave and I was tested, tested very good. It's a very good concave sphere. And uh, that's what I need is a concave sphere. And the eight inch is going to be a concave sphere. And I'm going to use a very accurate spirometer. Now this is accurate to a micron. And I've got it on a flat which I borrowed from a friend. It's a Mitutoyo. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at it and I'm going to zero the spherometer. And it zeroes. And then I'm going to measure the test plate for the Sagita. And it is 808 microns. And I've measured this before, and 808 is the number I'm looking for with this particular spherometer. Now I'm bringing it over to my work, and I'm going to measure the work. And that comes out to 793. So I'm about 15 microns off. I'm about 15 microns too shallow. And that's fine, because 
with this particular blank. I bought it from Newport Glass, and they're terribly reliable. I like them a whole lot. They'll make any size blank you want and grind it to any radius you want. Uh, and they'll grind it down to a 30 micron on a machine. So I'm taking it from 30 micron, and I'm going to bring it through a polished and figured mirror. And that's good enough for me. So if I'm a little bit shallow on the curve, and I know I'm starting with rough grinding, and the reason I'm starting with rough grinding is because this is at 30 micron, and it's got tooling marks in it, that gives me a little room to work to, uh, to get it a little bit deeper and to bring it right to bear. And I can continue to measure with this spherometer as I work the glass. And that's best practices, highly recommended. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my tools away and get ready just to do some grinding. And it's going to be probably an hour with each grade of grit. I go 320, then I'm going to go to 500 silicon carbide. From there, probably 15 micron, 9 micron, 5 micron, and I might finish up with 3. That is yet to be determined. And for a piece of glass this size, I'll usually go about an hour with each grid. And I'll measure in between, and if I get, go off on the Sajita, then I'll just turn around, stay with that grid, and bring it back to bear to where it needs to be. 320 is about the last grade that's going to make much in the way of a difference. Once you get to 500, it, it just becomes less and less, and when you get into the aluminum oxides, there's really not much difference at all that's going to be had in the uh, Sajita. However, I am going to keep careful track of it. Uh, I've heard of people, I've heard stories of people saying that they have made huge differences in their uh, Sajita through polishing. Uh, I respect the people that say that, they're good friends of mine, but I'm skeptical. I'm very skeptical. Uh, it's hard to measure a uh, focal length accurately uh, during any phase of wet pol of uh, rough grinding or fine grinding, even with mirror wet, Sam Brown notwithstanding. I think the real test is when you're actually in there doing your uh, polishing and you check a polished figure on a test stand. And by the way, I'm not a big fan of the Foucault test. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a strict autocollimation guy. I may do uh, a Ronke test with a sphere at, uh, at radius, and I'll be looking for uh, straight lines. I'm using maybe 133 uh, lines per inch there. Uh, that's about the best you could do given diffraction. But I'm, I'm not at all a fan of uh, the Foucault test. I just don't think it's accurate at all. Not that plenty of people haven't made good mirrors with it, but I just personally find it subjective. All right, and I'm back now. A word first about work stands. There are many different types of work stands and many theories about work stands. The work stand I use, I've done some videos on, I call it the Parker Barrel because it was designed by a very brilliant aircraft engineer who's also a good friend named Dick Parker. It's circular, it's a truss design, I have some concrete blocks under it, and it is rock solid even though it's built with eight one by twos. The angles that it's on and the countervailing forces just make it probably the greatest thing since, uh, since I don't know, Craftsman invented a work table. It's round, it's easy to go around. I have a secondary workbench on which I put my grit and I keep my water bottle. That way they're not in the way while I'm working. Uh, I always cover my work stand with newspaper, even when I'm polishing, and I use cleats, wooden cleats, to hold the tool down. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take about a half a spoon, well, I'm gonna take the mirror off first. And by the way, this is noted from, from uh, Newport Glass at 120R. That's a 120 inch radius. It's a 60 inch focal length. And my tool, <coughs> which has concentric circles ground in, is exactly the opposite, 120 inch negative radius. Uh, and they put these uh, circles in to facilitate grinding and facilitate the uh, grit. It's really a great a great kit. Again, you know, Newport Glass in uh, California, Stanton, California, is the way to go as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm going to take half a spoon of uh, grit, spread it on the tool, 
that might even be a little much. You know, when you're using grit, less is more frequently. You don't want it sitting on the newspaper because that doesn't do much, anybody much good. So maybe I use a quarter spoon of grit. And by the way, I, I bought some cheap plastic spoons. They cost right now in uh, 2013, they cost uh, about $1.69 for, I think, 20 of them. So they're dirt cheap. Um, if you're watching this in another country, just take my word for it. Plastic spoons are cheap. Uh, $1.69 is not a whole lot of money. Um, I put the I put the grid on. Use different ones because I don't want to have cross contamination with my grid. Remember, I'm working from rough, rough grid down to fine grid. And if you get rough grit and the fine grit, well, then you're looking at scratches and all sorts of other un, unhappy results. But now I put the grid on. I sprayed a little water on, not too much put my work on and I'm going to do some sort of a W stroke here. Three strokes, a little bit of a turn. I'm going around the work, around the uh, tool clockwise. So I'm going to spin the mirror counterclockwise. Please pardon my back. And I'm going to do this for an hour. And at the end of the hour, I'm going to measure my Sajita, see where I am. Should be pretty good. I might check somewhere in the middle, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of testing too terribly much, particularly at this stage. When it gets to figuring, that's another matter, but I'm a long way from that. The West going pretty well. And I'm going one way around, and every third stroke at the end of the W, I'm just turning the work maybe somewhere between an eighth and a quarter of a turn. And that's really all there is to this. I know some professional opticians, and they're all great guys, but uh, this is what they do for a living. Now they may do it on a machine, but eventually they've all done this by hand and more than they'd like to admit. And when it comes to figuring, very little figuring is actually done by machine. A lot of it is done one way or another by hand with some diameter laps. Even the guys that make optics that go into space and spend more time looking down than looking up if you catch my drift. This is what's involved. Well, that's it for now, and we'll be back in a little while in another video to show you how we're proceeding with this. Three, two, one. Well, I'm back again. It's been about 20 minutes of uh, fine grinding with 320 grit. I've taken a look at my blank, and all of the tooling marks are out from uh, the curved generation. Everything looks really good. I washed it off. I'm very happy with the way it looks right now. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure with the spherometer, with the Mitutoyo gauge, I've got this set to zero, put it on, I'm looking for 808, I'm at 820. So I went from being about, uh, I don't know, 10 to 15 microns too shallow to being about 8 microns too deep in 20 minutes. And that's what happens. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time chasing the curve. I'm going to finish with 320 right here and right now and I'm going to move on to 500 and I'm just going to do a uh, tool on top with the 500. Now one thing to remember is that it gets concave a lot faster than it gets convex. So I may be able to bring it right where I need to be with the 500 but it's going to take a while. Uh, that's why when you make it flats for example they seem to always turn out initially concave uh, no matter what you do. 
So you know the, the tool on the uh, flat on top or the uh, work on top usually works a whole lot faster than the tool on top. Well, that's all for this evening, February 9th, 2013, the day of Winter Storm Nemo. Beautiful day out. I understand it's supposed to be nice Sunday, nice Monday. The snow, I have a sneaking suspicion, will be gone by next week. By the way, I am a Springfield telescope maker. You see I have my Stella convention uh, sweatshirt on. Nothing I'm saying here should be construed as uh, being the official position of the Springfield telescope makers. I speak for myself, not for Stella Fane. However, if you're in the area, come visit us. We usually meet uh, on the Saturday closest to the new moon at the uh, at Stella Fane. You can check out our website at uh, www.stellafane.org. Good night.